Hi, I'm Sandra from Cherry Heart, and I'm here today with a tutorial for the border of the Crocheted Star blanket. I'm going to show you how to make this border, which is made with a spike stitch, um, and this border is an attempt to mimic the kind of quilt binding that you would get uh, when you finish a sewn quilt because this is very much based on sewing quilts. I wanted to mimic that same effect here. There were also a couple of other border ideas that I tried out and that I experimented a bit with and you'll find those included in the PDF pattern which is uh, on my blog cherryheart.co.uk and I'll put the link below the video for you. But this video will focus on this particular border. To begin, I'm going to use this sample block here um, to work my border around. Um, this is just one block from the uh, pattern and I'll just use that as a starting point. So the first round of the border, all the borders in fact, is just a row of double crochets around the edge of the blanket. So that'll be single crochets if you are working from American terms. Um, I'm in the UK, so I tend to use UK terms, but I'll mention the American terms as I go along as well. We're just going to make uh, join the yarn to any one of these blocks. You just want to avoid one of the corner blocks, but any other stitch on one of the other blocks along any edge is absolutely fine. So I'll just draw that yarn through a stitch so we can begin. So make a chain to start and the first stitch is in the same space place as that chain. So we're just going to make a double crochet, a US single crochet. And simply work one double crochet stitch into each stitch along the square. So that's one single crochet into each stitch along if you're using American terms. Then once I get to the spaces I like to do a decrease stitch just to pull those squares really closely together. So I yarn over and pull up in one um, chain space and then I do the same in the next chain space so I've got those three loops on my hook and then I just pull those all together into one stitch and that just brings them together nice and tightly. And then I carry on just making stitches into each stitch of the squares of the blanket. So here I am at a corner space again, so I'm going to do the same thing, just a loop from each space, draw them together and you can just see how that brings those squares nicely together. Just makes a little bit of a neater finish on the final blanket. So I'm up to the corner space and all I do there is just make one double crochet, one chain, one double crochet. So in American terms that's one single crochet, one chain, one single crochet and there I am round the corner and I can just carry on all the way along all the squares making a stitch into each stitch, a little decrease stitch at each corner. You don't have to do that, it's not essential but I just like it and finds it gives the neat finish. So here we are back at the beginning of the round. Just do these last few stitches. And then right back to the beginning there. So I just need to make a slip stitch into the top of that first stitch. So I just pull that through and pull through the working loop and then I can cut my yarn. So for the second round for this spike stitch quilt binding border, um, we're going to work another round in the same way, but this time in the contrast colour. 
Um, if you'd like to follow one of the alternative borders, um, those are included in the PDF pattern. So if you want to pop along to the PDF instructions, which I've linked below, then that's the time to do that now. But if you'd like to make this particular border, then uh, stay with the tutorial. So it's exactly the same as we did before. We just join the yarn to the same place, make a chain to start, and we start working our double crochet stitches or US single crochet stitches. We don't need to worry about the uh, corner spaces now because those have all been smoothed off on the first round and we can just carry on. <clears throat> so I've reached the corner here, I've got one more stitch to do and then I'm at that one chain space. It can be a little bit hard to see but what you want to do now is just work the corner in exactly the same way as you did before and as you will do for all following rows. So that's one double crochet into the corner or US single crochet, one chain and one more double crochet into that border, into that corner space, sorry. So both are going to the same place and then carry on just making one crochet stitch along each stitch. So I'll just show you that corner again there. So you can see the two stitches going into the corner there. There's one and there's a second and then between those is a little one chain gap. So it is quite a small hole. If you'd like to do two chains there to make that hole a bit more visible you absolutely can that's fine um but i like to keep it nice and tight because of the way the spike stitches are worked into it later it helps it lie nice and flat if you can keep it tight at this stage but if it's easier for you to see and you'd like to do two chains there then that's fine you can also put a little stitch marker in there once you've made your chain pop a little progress keeper to mark the spot that's another way to do it so now that we've got a row of the contrast cutter on, we're going to go back to the main colour and we're going to work five more rows in exactly the same way as we did for this contrast colour here. So five more rows with a double crochet all the way along the edge and one DC, one chain, one DC into each corner space. So in American terms, that's a single crochet all the way along the edge one SC, one chain, one SC into that little corner space. And remember, you can put a two chains into that corner space if you'd like to, if that is easier. So now I've completed the five rows of the main colour yarn and we're ready to do the spike stitch or the extended spike stitch. So you can see everything's curling up a little at the moment. Um, that's fine because the spike stitch is going to sort that out nicely for us. So I'm going to start just uh, anywhere along the edge here, just a little away from the corner. I'm going to join my yarn in and make a chain. So to make the spike stitch, we're going to follow down and put our hook into the stitch in that contrast colour row, row two that's immediately below the stitch we're working on. So it's the same stitch, but much lower down. I'm going to yarn over, pull that through, and then pull that yarn up to the height we're working at. Oops. And then I'm going to put the hook into the same stitch as the starting chain, just for this first stitch. I'm going to yarn over and pull through the stitch and through that loop on the hook. So that leaves me with two on there. And then I'm going to yarn over and pull through to complete the stitch. So I'll show you that again. So we'll take the hook down to round two. 
So we get the corresponding stitch. So we'll be working to this next stitch. So we want the one below. So put the hook into there, yarn over, pull that through and up to the height of the work now. Put your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through the stitch and through the spiked loop so that you've got two loops on your hook again, then yarn over and pull through two. I'll show you a bit closer again. Go into the stitch from round two, yarn over, pull it up to the current height, put your hook into the current stitch, yarn over, pull through that stitch, through the loop, and that secures it up at this height, and then yarn over and pull through those two loops. So carry on working those spike stitches along the edge, just making sure you bring that spike stitch up to the right height so that you don't curl down the rows in between. You want to make sure that they stay nice and straight and stood up. So here I am at the corner, I've made a spike stitch into the last stitch on this side and now I'll be working into the chain space. So I need to know, you need to know how to finish this corner. So first we will, we, first thing to do is we will make a spike stitch into that corner space. So just pop the hook in there, pull the hook up as you have been doing. Oops. Work into the stitch, yarn over and through the spike loop, yarn over and through two. The next one will be made into the corner space of the next row. So round three will work into that corner space. So I'll pop my hook in, pull the spike up, work into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through. And we're just going to be making a, short, a slightly shorter spike each time. So next one, we work into the next corner space. So round four four in exactly the same way. So you can see how the spike stitches are getting gradually shorter as we work our way up the corner. So there's one more stitch to do, one more corner space left unworked. So the hook goes into the corner space and into the stitch and we make that final small spike stitch and then I can just work into the corner. So I'll make one double or US single, one chain and one more UK double US single. And now we need to work the spike stitches down the corner spaces again. So into the corner, pull the spike up. So into the corner, pull the spike up into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, into the next corner space down and make the spike stitch. And just do that in exactly the same way, working into one corner space lower each time. And that's going to give us the effect of a mitered corner just like you would get on a sewn quilt. So you just need to do that all the way around the blanket, just straight spike stitches all the way along the edge into each of these, the row below. And then once you run out of stitches to do on round two, you can just start working up the corner spaces and down the other side and then along the flat again until the blanket, if, till you've worked all the way around the blanket. So you can see as well how that's making that side line nice and straight now. And this side still wants to curl, but the spike stitches have made this all lay nice and flat.